101.5 FM, dude, love it. And Ode to Troy Casadaly, that's a new one out and about. You'd be, uh, we'll let you know details about that as uh, as that EP makes its way around. Sure will. Well, one of your favourites. <gasps> it is. You're always saying, when do I get to see these guys from Queensland? What's going on? I'm not travelling to Melbourne. I'm not going to Bendigo. When are they going to hear that? <laughs> How's that? That's my Tracy impression. I reckon yeah, that's pretty that's good. Yeah, that's charming. Of course, that's we, charming. We... Uh, that's going to not give me any chance next time I say to her, how about we just stay in tonight, how that's going to work. It's not going to work at all. We, of course, are talking about Brooke Chevelle and the Brooke Chevelle va- band. They're doing terrific things. And Brooke's on the phone now to talk about his new single, Let's Stay In. How you going, man? Very well, yourself? Very well. Uh, mate, um, I heard this song and I said... Uh, that's not Brooke Chevelle. You did. You I, said to me, who is this guy? Who these guys? I said, I know Brooke Chevelle. They're an up-tempo party band. That's not Brooke Chevelle. <laughs> yeah, no, it was uh, it was a very conscious decision to put this one out because um, I know you've got to keep the ladies happy, I reckon. Well, you've made this lady happy. I can tell you that much, Brooke. Thank you very much. <laughs> Because you know what, when you when you sort of thought when I first heard, gone, yes, because every band needs a bum clutcher. So halfway through the night, we've had a few beers. The guys are feeling lucky. You need a song like that to bring them in. What do you need? Oh, you, they, well, they call them bum clutchers, don't they? <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an old band thing from 20 years ago, Brooke. The whole idea was to be able to um to get them to squeeze the other person's derriere. Oh, right, right. And that's what they call it for, to get it there. And so the classic used to be, can I have this dance for the rest of yeah, my life? And, they, and they'd all go, oh, I love you. And oh, normally no. the alcohol talking, but anyway. Um, <laughs> what, um, what was the inspiration behind the song? Um, well, it's something that I kind of went through myself. Um, I wrote, I actually wrote this song, the, the initial version of this song I actually wrote by myself. And then, um, Anthony came in and said, you just, there was just some mushy lines in there that were, uh, a bit over the top. <laughs> and he said, you can't sing that. That's just Big wrong. <laughs> yeah, very, very. So, um, yeah, the second half of the second verse and the, and the bridge were kind of him. But yeah, it's, it's something that I kind of went through myself and it's really just about, know life's hard these days being in a relationship you know especially you know two people working different jobs and usually different hours as well and um you know sometimes you just got to put time aside so that you can um you know remember why you're together in the first place i guess Mm. well said I must say that it didn't work for that particular relationship. Oh. But... <laughs> <laughs> spoiler, spoiler alert! <laughs> it's funny because everyone, everyone that I ask about the song, I always say, "Do you reckon they stayed together in the end?" And they always say, "Yeah, of course they did." But wow. <laughs> Didn't happen. You're the only people I've ever told that, by the way. Well, oh, oh yeah, because right. it, it, it won't, won't go past our lips. Hey? No, 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 no one's listening. It's a scoop. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell anyone. So. Um, uh, ooh, so all the is this ladies. is this a is this a uh, a new line of of heading for the Brooks Chevelle band? We, we're not going to be, um, you know, this it's still a core uh, a, a country rock band, isn't it? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, we we kind of just went in. I mean, it it's kind of part. It's a big part of what we do. We just you know we love writing ballads and we love you know getting that that whole soppy thing out. But you know. We just love rocking out on stage, so you can only do so many ballads before the people start yawning. Yep. Yeah. And, that, and that's a shame. That's why we, um, we found a lot of people over here in sunny Queensland, well, it's not been sunny at the moment, but um, are doing a lot more of the songwriters in the, in the round and also down in Sydney, and that's where they're singing more of their ballad stuff. So when they're out in the big stages, they're doing the big country rock stuff, but then when they're doing the songwriters in the round, that's when they're getting out their, their ballads and stuff. I think you'd probably find that, and, and I know this is, probably true for myself as well you know i find that i'm probably more proud of the ballads that i've written because they are generally Mm -hmm. directly out of my life you know they're they're things that have actually happened or are happening or whatever and um you know sometimes when you're writing a country rock song you you know sometimes you have to come up with a different circumstance or you have to you know do something that's outside of you know what your life's been i guess because you can only write so many songs about getting drunk (laughs) <laughs> well, that's true. Which is fun, but it is yeah. fun. But I suppose what you're trying to say there is, um, you know, you've got your party songs, which is rocking out in the band, but then you're actually going to tell your story. So ballads really yeah. do tell your story. 
Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. And the, the country rock ones are telling the stories you probably didn't really want to tell anyway. <laughs> I must admit that is true. <laughs> yes. um, what about Queensland? When um, What's the chance of uh, seeing Brooke Chevelle in Queensland? Actually, we're having big discussions in the band at the moment about, um, you know, because we're, we're realising more and more, because there's not really a massive country scene down in Melbourne, so we're realising more and more we just need to get... You know, we need to get into Queensland, we need to get into New South Wales and play some shows. It's just hard because we, you know, aside from one of the guys in the band, we all work day jobs. So we have to kind of work around the whole, you know, day gig thing to, to, you know, I guess we could do weekend spots or whatever, you know, just go up and do two gigs or something like that. But, yeah, we we definitely want to start doing that. Okay, I'll, I'll do your deal. Okay. If you if you put your application in now for the uh, what's the festival at uh, Stanthorpe, the sixth something no. mountain. Oh. Um. Anyway, we'll we'll give you the details on that. The sixth of October weekend. Okay. Um. There's a there's a big country music festival up there for the weekend, yep. and uh, Troy Casadale is going to be there, I think, and a, oh, yeah, and a few others. The, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think you probably still got your time to get your application. If you guys come up there, we'll make the two-hour trek to Stanthorpe to come and see you. Wow. I'll have to see if I can get on it. <laughs> yeah, get on that, and then maybe a gig on Country New South Wales on the way up and the way back. That's Yeah, that's the and, answer. And I think there's a lot of uh, thing out there, so all the listeners out there that are going, yay, they're coming to Queensland or something like when a band's thinking about it, is you need to actually then get off your bums and go and support these bands because it's one thing to say we want you guys here, and when they make the effort, and it, it's not cheap, is it, Brooke? It's quite expensive to get... And as you said, it's not just money expenses, it's time expensive as well, and it's group expensive. But when well, they, I mean, Go on. I was going to say, you know, you think there's there's five guys in the band and we all have to have, you know... It, I mean, driving to Queensland is not really a doable option in, in a weekend. So, yeah. you know, basically we have to fly, so that's a certain amount of money and we have to have accommodation, which is a certain amount of money, and then you have to rent a a van which is in more money and then you have to rent your equipment because you can't take it up on the plane with you etc etc it all yeah, yeah, but doesn't it? the drummer have a van it doesn't have a van the, the drummer. drummers always have a van that's how they get the gig actually I'm the one with the van oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. dear see there you go Not- singer got it all 97 Ford panel van. There you go. Oh, <laughs> the old panel nice. van. <gasps> nice. Mount View. Mount View Music Festival is one I was trying to think of in Stanford. Oh, okay. Yeah. But anyway, we move on from there. Now, we've we've been doing this show for nearly five years, so we've spoken to a, a lot of the, a lot of our guests a few times. So we thought we've come up with a series of four oh, questions. I have, to, I, I have nothing to do with this, Brooke. We, Absolutely excellent. nothing. Excellent. We have come up with a series of oh, four questions to, um, to ask our... Uh, uh, our guests to just get a little bit of an insight into them. Are you okay for these? Yeah, of course. Uh, Beautiful. Yourself. All right, I've got to find the questions now. <laughs> oh, I know the first one. What's your favourite food? Uh, favourite food? It, it it changes, and it changes often. I go through phases. Um, uh, we can go with one. Right, right now, what would you be favourite food? Right, right at this very moment. Um, uh, yellow curry, yellow Thai curry. Yum. Mm. Anyway, Darren good on you. Darren hates curry, but yeah. I love it, so that's I don't good. like it. Uh, footy team, any code, just favourite uh, footy team? I hate to admit it because, you know, I've, I've, dealt with, nah, oh. I, I've dealt with 30 years of disappointment, Richmond, Tigers. Uh, yeah, oh well, I knew, if I, I knew a, uh, a few Tiger supporters as well. Anyway, they're no longer with us anymore because <laughs> they just couldn't live with themselves. Um, <laughs> uh, look. I I remember uh, I think it was 1982, wasn't it? Was that when the last no time idea. they won a flag? 1980 or something? No, no. Nah, eight, been... Eighty was eighty was the last flag, and yeah. eighty two was the last time. Uh, eighty one was the last time they were in a grand final, and they got pumped by uh, Carlton. Yeah, eighty two. Yeah, I remember eighty. That was yeah, Darren's sounding all smug there, Brooke. But we're actually Cronulla Sharks, <clears throat> Cronulla Sharks supporters in the NRL, and they're yeah, no. We and they've won. been in the competition since 1967, and they've won nothing. But anyway, we'll move on. Um, <laughs> a song you wish you had have written. Oh, there's so, so many. Um, a song that I wish I had it written. Can we? Can I come back to yep. that one? Can I do the other question now? Yeah, sure it's thing. Hard. What's something something that you would, would tell 13-year-old Brooke Chevelle? Um, I will be skinny one day. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was a, I was a chubby kid, so. Oh, well, that's good. Not a that's cuddle. great. Um, and a song you wish you had it written. Oh, just so many. But you can only pick one. Um, uh, um, so lonesome I could cry by Hank Williams. Nice. We had someone last week say, um. Uh, I will always love you from Dolly Parton because of the royalties it would have had. <laughs> uh, mate, we're going to go out with Let's Stay In. It's been a pleasure to catch up with you again as usual. Good luck with this single. It seems like uh, it's going to do great things. Uh, and here's the chance to, what did you call it, a bum clencher? Yeah. Here's the chance now for people to get some bum, bum clenchers now, hey? Thanks for your time, Brooke. See you, man. Thank you very much, guys.